So let's take a look at the next use case for FME Server, provide self-serve data integration. FME Server enables you to democratize your data integration workflows. You no longer need to process each and every integration request that comes in. You can design workflows for common integration requirements at your organization, and then hand off the responsibility of running them to FME Server and the person with the request without requiring this person to have any technical knowledge of the workflow. It's quick and easy to build FME server apps that anyone can run. In fact, Chris is going to show you how to create an example here shortly, and I think you'll be really surprised how fast it can be. Alternatively, you can create custom apps using the FME server REST API. Let's look at a few examples. At the city of Burnaby, GIS staff were fulfilling an ever-increasing demand for one-call reports. Like most cities and utility companies, they are required by law to provide citizens and businesses with underground infrastructure information for a work site before construction begins to keep assets secure and people safe. The volume of applications to DIG have increased by more than 6,000% within the past two decades, and they continue to grow. Burnaby decided to automate the process with FME Server, delivering self-serve data clipping and integration to the public without requiring the technical knowledge on the part of the person making the request. Once a request is placed, FME Server automatically kicks off the process, delivering an email with the requested one-call package in three minutes, far faster than the three days it was taking the team before. The City of Henderson is also providing self-serve data integration, but instead of sending out a data package, they are receiving data. Like many cities, they require as-built CAD drawings to be submitted by land developers, and they have used FME Server to provide a self-serve data upload and validation service. This has freed up the GIS team, reducing data integration time by 75%, eliminating the risk of manual error, and ensuring that CAD data is validated consistently before it's added to their data set. If there are any errors, the system provides this information to the person uploading the data so they can correct its accuracy and try again. Chris is going to demo this in a moment, but first let's take a look at some of the resources that are available to help you get started with providing self-serve data integration. You can check out more details on the customer projects I showed you today, and you can follow this article in the community to get started with FME Server apps yourself. So here I'll pass it over to Chris to show you the demo of this in action. Okay, so here we go. We're back into the FME server uh, web UI. Um, in the first example, we showed how to build an automation. And in this example, we're going to build a server app with that same workspace that we've already published. I would say server apps are probably one of my favorite features of FME server um, because it makes it's a great way to make non users run workspaces and not even know it. So it's very easy to build. You just go to the server apps page and build app. Then from here, once it loads up, it's just as simple as entering in a little bit of information. So you have to give it a name, of course, seven, oh, no spaces, seven reasons webinar, point it to the directory, very similar to that automation run workspace, select the workspace and choose the service. So I mentioned that I would explain the services a bit more in detail in this example. So you'll, what you'll notice is we published the workspace with three services. The first one is data download, and it kind of does exactly what it says. It will provide the output of the workspace as a download uh, in a zipped folder um, as soon as the workspace has completed. The second one, data streaming, would be something where you can stream something like an HTML report or a PNG, KML, or PDF right back then and there to the user's web browser. This is a great option if you want to have self-serve with some response from the, uh, the workspace completing. And the last option is job submitter. And this is simply just running the workspace. Let's have it set to data download. And you can also see that you can ensure authentication. So you can make sure that only users who are set up on FME server can run this. Users can upload and you can set additional permissions as well. The big benefit of FME server apps is that all of the parameters that you've configured in the workspace are still accessible. And that's all the user needs to set. So it's a very simple interface for them to run. And the last bit we're going to touch on is just this customize option. So you can make this, instead of looking like a generic FME server app, you can make this look like it's customized a bit more to your organization. So we can go ahead and upload our own header image. This can be any image. There are size limits, but as long as you meet that, it'll be fine. And your own icon as well. So just like that, we've created our first server app. As soon as you hit OK, you'll be uh, presented with a URL to that uh, server app. And then you can go ahead and run it and distribute this to as many users, like I said, whoever has a web connection out there. 
So this is running the exact same workspace and we'll, oops, that's the wrong one. We want this, the bad data DWG. So we'll go ahead and run this data validation as a server app now. This one is going to be running with the data download service. So what we expect is a URL, URL for a zip file once this completes. There we go. Once we click that file, it'll download to our local machine. A similar example of this, and this is just showing what a generic FME server app would look like if you didn't upload your own image um, and set your own header, is something like this. And we can use this exact same data set. And this is going to be the data streaming example. So we'll let that load, click OK, let the workspace do its thing. And now what we see in the output is that the data is streamed right back to us. So we can already visualize which features have failed the validation. So I know on my end, I can go back and edit these features and re-upload them. Mm -hmm.